what is happening y'all cowboy here and welcome to arcane build 2.0 mogwin's chosen now this build takes a huge emphasis on bleed building on every aspect of the previous arcane build and i've been waiting on this for a bit i really wanted to wait until the arcane weapons got fixed that has happened with patch 1.03 and this build is better than ever so let's jump right into it first off with the stats we are 150 uh, Vigor has gone up to 60 to hit that soft cap 1900 health. Mine we have up to 30, and this is enough that it'll give us two casts of our highest costing spell, which is really nice. Uh, Endurance at 22 gives us a medium equipment load, even with multiple weapons on, as well as a little bit of room to fight. Uh, strength we actually have down at base, but that's boosted up from the Radigan Source Seal. But you want 12 strength as your target. Uh, Dexterity we have up to 30, 9 intelligence which is just baseline and then faith we go up to 36 for weapon requirements and arcane up to 45. now initially i actually tried uh boosting the arcane more to to see if you know if i could get a little bit more encant scaling out of it uh you get roughly one more point of encant scaling per point going past that 45 arcane so going up to 50 i went from uh, 325 up to 330 so i don't think it's really worth it to go past the 36 45 threshold at least for a build like this now, talking about the gear, our mainstays of the build, they're back, baby, the Godskin Peeler. And what's better than one Godskin Peeler? Two Godskin Peelers. So the double twin blade is honestly kind of nutty. I think it has one of the best power stance movesets in the game. Um, and this is this is insane. So even though our base AR is only 440 with this at bleed, and you know, you can compare it to this, and you're like, well, that's 550. Why would we use Eleonora? Uh, 77 blood loss, 132 blood loss. So that's insane. We can do seppuku on top of it. Uh, and then the thing that's really nice about this is our jumping L1, that counts as four hits. So ba-boom, ba-boom. So four hits with like 150 bleed per hit we had on seppuku. Uh, and we're doing 600 plus bleed damage in a, a single attack, which I mean, there's pretty much every single target in the game that's not bleed resistant is going to instantly bleed from that. And you can just do it over and over and over. Uh, in fact, it goes so far that with seppuku on these, just two swings like that is going to bleed a target. So incredibly strong setup, capable of getting bleed procs just absolutely at a ridiculous rate. Uh, besides that, I like to have the Reduvia as my backup. You know, it's, it's fast. Blood Blade is great to catch people. All around solid choice. Dragon Communion Seal, obviously a no-brainer here. 325 and Cant Scaling on that. Dual Scaling with Arcane and Faith. Just fantastic all around for Arcane builds. Uh, now, we do have some other weapon selections. I'm going to talk about these briefly. Uh, first up, the Regalia of Echo Aid and the Marius Executioner Sword. Both of these have been fixed, and their damage is actually pretty good. I got a two-hand to show the, the proper damage on it. You can see 637 here, 562 here, but these don't have bleed on them. Uh, these are definitely arcane viable. I would say both of these are more a strength oriented arcane style. Uh, this one in particular with the B scaling, but because we're not getting anything out of bleed, we're not going to be using these at all. But I do want to point out that all these split damage arcane weapons are fixed, and these are definitely viable uh, just in terms of testing, getting the, the full charge off with this, just to show this thing. When you charge it up, throw it out, boom, 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 boom. And then there's a follow-up attack. Uh, testing on the trolls, I got 2,200 damage with Regalia, and then 2,400 damage with Marius. So they're definitely strong, and there's some applications here. And, you know, if you're up against something that doesn't bleed, they might be a interesting choice to swap to, just in terms of having a potential alternate weapon. So I did want to point them out. Uh, Rivers of Blood. This has been fixed, and it's insane now. Honestly, we are going to see Rivers of Blood all over the place. If you don't want to use the dual godskin, using dual rivers is obviously fantastic. You get that good dual katana moveset. You have the roll with the double catch. And then, of course, you have Corpse Piler, which is one of the most ridiculous weapon arts in the game. Uh, it just, it like instant kills players. So, if you want to go for a unique weapon, rivers is best in slot, in my opinion. Uh, the other thing that's nice about rivers is... Without having some Puku out, we can focus more on just general katana play and then also doing our casting. So, you know, toss out a quick cast, you can roll in, go into your weapon arc. So it's really good in that regard, uh, and especially now that scaling has been fixed. This is just an absolutely stupendous weapon. Uh, moving on from there, though, we have Eleonora's Pole Blade. Now, this thing is not bad. The damage is up there at 550. It gets deck scaling, it gets arcane, so it works well with this build. But my problem with it is... The weapon art has a lot of startup. So this is all startup, and then we jump in and we start going for the combo. 
and then we dash back. And it's not bad, but just in my testing, I've noticed that if you're fighting a target that starts moving at all, um, you know, whether that's PvP or PvE, you end up whiffing quite a few of the hits. Now, it is a pretty good weapon art, and obviously the damage is there. So if you want to use Eleonora, feel free to. I would suggest using this just standard as opposed to power stancing, because the reason these are so effective in power stance is because they have 132 bleed on each, and, you know, this is only 77. So if you want instant bleed, these are going to be the better choice. But this is a fun weapon to work with, and it is certainly viable to use in this build. Uh, another thing I want to point out, so I have blood on these. You can put a cult on them, and that will jump up their AR closer to this, but then you're purely relying on Seppuku for your bleed procs. So I wasn't really a fan of that. Seppuku lasts for about a minute, which is good. So if you're doing a cult and Seppuku, you know, as long as you can shred a boss in under a minute, you're going to be fine. But once that runs out and then you don't have bleed, you know, it just doesn't feel right because this is a blood build. So I like having blood on both Godskin Peelers. If you are fighting something that's bleed immune and you don't want to work with one of these, just changing these to be a cult will do fantastic. You just make them a cult that boosts your arcane scaling up to B. They go up to like 500 and, and some change AR. Put a different weapon art on them. They're going to work just fine. Mogwin's Sacred Spear, baby. Now this thing is, it's a little bit goofy, but honestly it's one of the craziest weapons in the game I've seen. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic for killing turtles, people with great shields, people you get trapped in rooms. You put this on them, and it's just like, boom. It's the same exact move from the boss fight. You can do that up to three times. It's going to do a lot of damage. It's going to do a lot of bleed. It buffs itself, so it's up to 702 AR with Blood Flame. The Blood Flame does not last an incredibly long time, but it is a great spear. So it has those very meaty pokes. Obviously, if you wanted to do a beefier variant of this build, you could combo this thing with a great shield and just poke and bleed, and it's going to be pretty terrifying to run against, I'd imagine. Um, but it is situational. It's a very long cast to get that thing off, but it definitely, definitely does damage. So do not discount it. Uh, moving on from there, White Mask. This is fantastic. I didn't know this thing existed when I did the first iteration of the Arcane build, but this is just a 10% attack power increase once a target is bleeding. Uh, moving on from there, Fingerprint Armor, Gauntlets, and Greaves. I just really like how this looks fashion-wise. I think it kind of goes with the White Mask. You know, we're not too chunky, which, you know, I didn't want to be a, a thick boy, and I think it really just kind of blends well together. Uh, moving on to our talismans, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. This is going to be fantastic with a lot of these weapons, whether you're using the dual katanas or the twin blades, you're obviously getting successive attacks. So this just works in. It's just a very, very solid choice all around. Uh, if you don't want that damage, instead you could go for Dragon Crest Great Shield, you could go for Erdtree's Favor Plus 2, any of those are going to work. In fact, if you wanted to get a little bit more dexterity, you could go for Millicent's Prosthesis. And as you can see, it's going to help our skills out. It's not a huge boost, but you know you could go for that as well. So either of these is going to be a solid choice. If you want to go the tankier route, of course, you know you got this guy, or you got Great Crest Shield. Uh, moving on from there, Radigan's Source Seal. Now, so while this is a 15% increase to the damage taken, when you consider the race to Vigor, it, it rounds out more to around like 13%. Uh, but I think this is going to be worth it a lot on hybrid builds. The more I play with it, I wouldn't use this on like pure dex or pure strength, but something like this build where, you know, I have to get some points into faith, I need to get points into arcane, I want to work with some weapons, so I'm putting points into strength and into dex, and I want to have decent health. On hybridized builds like that, the source seals are definitely going to be worth it. Uh, with this in particular, definitely Radigans over Marikas, because Marikas is going to boost Int. Int isn't helping us at all. And while this build is mainly Arcane and Dex with, you know, hitting Faith for a spell requirement, we have quite a few weapons here that are going to see some scaling from Strength. So just having that little bit of Strength coming in from it, even though we don't need it, that is going to be beneficial to us. Uh, Flox Canvas Talisman. This is my suggestion because we have so many dragon spells. In my testing, uh, Godfrey Icon unfortunately doesn't boost them. War Medallion doesn't boost them. And some people have said Radigan Icon does, but you're like holding out the cast. So I don't think it's really worth it here, especially because we're taking a much stronger emphasis around our dragon spells this time around. Flox Canvas Talisman, on the other hand, that's just going to buff all of our spells across the board. So in my opinion, that's going to be the clear winner here. Uh, and lastly, but certainly not least, Lord of Blood's Exaltation. This is a 20% attack power boost. This does stack on top of the mask. So once these both go up, we're going from 440 up towards like almost 700 or so. Uh, so very, very solid combination. As for our flask, I would suggest steadily restoring HP just to offset the HP loss from using Seppuku. Your second choice is whatever you want. I just like Opaline Bubble Tier to prevent one shots. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's very flexible in what you're going to use. Next, let's talk about our spells, and I'm going to actually jump over to Warmaster Shack to 
show you some brief testing on the Giants. We're not gonna be doing a lot of PVE with this video because you know I've already covered that in the previous one and this is just stronger. It's, you know, take the last video and just imagine more damage. Uh, but anyway, into our spell loadout. Swarm of Flies, obviously it's fantastic on a blood build. This is gonna be slight chase in PVP, very strong ranged attack in PVE because basically one Swarm of Flies is gonna be one blood proc, so very potent. Uh, I really like having Bestial Sling on this build just to help chase people down. We got plenty of Encantalay, so it's just a nice quick toss out to finish people off as they're running. I still like Blood Boon. Blood Boon is definitely a solid choice here, mainly just because of the zoning potential of it. Uh, a lot of people run openly in Bubble Tier. This is going to easily pop the tier off. This is great wave clear if you're just kind of fighting and you want to get rid of a bunch of crap. Uh, and then I'm still a fan of my Dragon stuff. The Adorix is Magma. This is fantastic. We've put on Borealis Mist to give us a Frostbite option, Zeke's Decay to give us the Rod option, and then of course, my favorite spell, the Placidu Saxus Ruin. This thing is just fantastic, man. The, the jumping instant lightning explosion catches so many people in PvP. No one sees it coming, and it's like an instant 700 plus damage. Um, because we are using a Source Seal, I like Golden Bow just to boost up our defense and offset that. But you could definitely split things up here. You know, if you want to use Dragon Maul or Dragon Claw, or you want to work in uh, Glintstone or Fire Breath, definitely do it. If you're fighting something that's immune to Frostbite or immune to Rot, but it's like weak to Fire or it's weak to Magic, you know, there's no reason to not use that stuff. And I want to reiterate that when it comes to spells, spells themselves don't scale. So it's not it's not like you know, oh, I'm using Arcane, I have to use Dragon. Your spell damage is based off that Encant scaling number. So even though I went Arcane, all of my spells are going to get that 325. Whether I'm using Lightning Spells, Dragon Spells, Blood Spells, it doesn't matter. That 325 is what's going to determine how hard my spells are hitting. So definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, real fast, just to show some, some basic numbers on what this can do. We're just going to do some, some tests with the Twin Blades. We'll show you uh, what Rivers is capable of. I mean, the, the patch fixing up Arcane is honestly just, it's kind of insane what we're capable of doing now. So, of course, whole wide tap L1, two hand that one, and then you're just going to do uh, L2 on that one. And then you have double some Puka. Lead. Lead. And just like, it's, it's stupid. Lead. Like, that's, that, I mean, all right, well, we've showed that. You, you've seen what that can do. You know, there's no reason that we have to we have to talk about that more. Uh, let's go, let's talk about Rivers. So Rivers is obviously just insane damage. Before someone's like, oh, well, these are just trolls. Keep in mind, this is New Game Plus. Uh, so, you know, these trolls have like 6,000 a shell. to show those off. Those are solid, they're just, they're not bleed, so I'm not going to show them. I will show off this, though. This is funny, and like I said, this is, I like using this if people are turtled up, if they're hiding, you know, but it's a very slow weapon art, and honestly, part of me wants to make a more strength-oriented arcane build, where I thicken up the poise, uh, basically get strong enough that I could get this off and not be interrupted, because just damage. There's one cast, we did 2300. If I can get it to where I'm not being stomped on by this guy. Yeah. It's hard to get off in PvP, for sure. It's a little bit tricky to get off in PvE. But, man, this thing does damage. Like, anything that's not bleed immune. Which, I do want to... Just for the record, final boss is bleed immune. Um, so, food for thought. But, you know, you're, you're going to do insane damage with this stuff. And even against bleed immune stuff. Like I said, you could either go occult on your twin blades and still have good damage. We have our dragon spells, which are obviously insanely strong. You know, this, this you're gonna do damage no matter what. Um, so yeah, Magwin Spear, just a fantastic choice here. It's, that weapon art is silly, man, just murdering those trolls. Uh, but anyway, that's gonna wrap it up. I think I killed all the trolls. Well, you know what, here, real fast, just, just one more troll. I'll show you the Eleonora's Pole Blade. Um, like I said, it's it it works. It's just you're very dashy, you're going all over the place, and I feel like because of that, it tends to whiff a little bit. But we're gonna run on over here. One more troll, we'll show that off. 
Uh, and then after that, we're just going to go to a PvP montage. I was running around in Lakes of Tox. That seems to be the, the new hotspot for invasions. I don't know if it's because everyone's trying to get their bloody finger quest done or what the case is, but it's a fantastic place to capture PvP footage. So, for those that want to do what we're doing, we just go there, he summons me, then we pop Taunter's Tongue, and then it's just 2v2s all day long. So, it's really fun. kind of seeing the problem. Dude slightly moved and then all of a sudden a bunch of the attacks are whiffing. Now when it is going off, when you're hitting all of it, it's good damage. But it's the excessive movement and the jumping with this that makes it a little bit iffy. Whereas Bloodhound, you know, you're dodging one attack, you're coming and encountering. This, you have the long wind up and then the jump in and then some attacks and then you're going to dash back. And I feel like a lot of people, as soon as they see that wind up, they're just like, nope, they just roll away. Uh, last thing to mention, Spiral Horn Shield. This is my go-to small shield now. Check this out. You put it on, boom. Across the board. Frenzy, Sleep, Frostbite, Bleed, Rot, Poison. Increase resistance against everything. So if you're looking for a small parry shield with carrying retaliation to stop Moonveil spammers, this is my suggestion. I think it's fantastic. Uh, but either way, let's jump in, show you some PvP. I got footage of using pretty much all the weapons with the exception of the, the uh, non-bleed ones. But anyway, let's check it out. Uh, looks like oh that thing has arcane sword right or no it's faith what is he doing is uh, he just rushing you yeah <laughs> oh, it's laggy there's the second bleed he's dead uh, man beast curve sword or whatever there's the second one this one looks like a mage i'm gonna go blow up the mage first okay to help with this one. Just buy a little bit of time. I'll kill him in a second. Yeah. There goes your shield. I used to be using that. Nonsense with you jump. Oh. Oh, well, now he's just dead. <laughs> Megatron. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. Hi. That's why you level bigger, kids. This one is kind of laggy, they're just like standing still in certain parts. I don't know what's happening. Are you even playing? Oh, oh, all your damage is about to hit on him. I don't know. Oh, yep, there it, there it is. is. <laughs> it's me, I'm stabbing myself. I'm not a threat. Come and see me. Somebody trying to use Horfrost still. I can I can still you. see it as a as like a roll catch. Oh, who are you? Millennium boy came in at Beat him for another one. I'm gonna hit him with a decay. Oh no, he's going for it now. I couldn't roll. Oh, they're both dead at least. Bloody finger shakes. Oh, he's got a hammer. He's gonna need nothing to jump attacks. Rivers of blood is hard to use.
stop dashing around. I got him, I got him. No, you. <laughs> oh no. Maybe you should have leveled your vigor by this one. Oh, fingerprint shield. This one should be fun. Hang on. This gives me a fun idea. Uh, can I get it out in time? Oh, yes. <laughs> Come here, great shield man. Unless he pokes me. Oh, he's gonna poke no. through it. Hang on. It's a distance. There it is. <laughs> 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 yes, hide behind Good. your shield. Good. <laughs> Isn't this the guy we killed a second ago? What are you doing? Ah, it's Melania. Oh, what the fuck? No, it's not Melania. It's the uh, it's the poison katana. That's Why are you using that? That's not even good. Quick thousand damage. It's like it's <laughs> host host thirst is like the number one death of invaders. You can't can't be too thirsty for the host. Oh man, I can like I wanted... visibly see my draw distance being drawn as I'm running. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, great patch. Why? Why are you even using that <laughs> ability? Fight a berserk guy. I have determination now. Oh! 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 Gotta give it to him. Gotta give it to him. I'm gonna do double, double Reduvius. Oh, this dude's playing blood too. Cool. to those. Flies, 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 flies. When they touch you, you will die. Right. Oh, he's using the blessing. Okay, this will be interesting. So this guy's upping his bleed resist and then also using Senkuku. That's, that's an interesting combination. And he's got the... Uh Boys armor. But he is a full blown monster. Monster out on the dragon. Let's find out. Yeah, he's way outside the range. And he's moving. Moving and cruising. I'm gonna go for the other Where one. Where is he going? I don't know, running away. I mean, can you blame him? I'd run away if I saw the dragon. Coated sword. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, rivers of blood is kind of stupid. You shouldn't be able to just use a weapon or like that and kill somebody. Uh oh. All right. Let's see how terrible Eleonora's is. Here we go. You'll never get me. Oh my god, he's standing in it, dude! <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it worked! Alright, well, let's try another one. I mean, wow. I know, I know, I, I said this wasn't really that viable, but man, that dude had to be brain dead for that to actually connect. 
Yeah, like that. Like, you can just do any attack you want through it. Don't want to miss a classy. 